for differentiating between sedative hypnotic agents and antipsychotic drugs using Cook's climbing pole apparatus. This test can reveal the effects of several central nervous system drugs on the conditioned and unconditioned response. It is especially helpful in evaluating antipsychotic drugs used to treat schizophrenia. Requirements Cook's climbing pole apparatus Experimental animals, mice Drugs to be tested, drug X and drug Y One is an antipsychotic drug and the other is a sedative hypnotic Normal saline for control group Equipment to administer drugs The Cook's climbing apparatus consists of a chamber enclosed in a dimly lit soundproof box the chamber has a grid floor which generates a mild electric shock. In the center is a wooden pole which acts as a shock-free zone. A speaker connected to a buzzer is placed inside the box. The mice to be used in the experiment are preconditioned for a few days prior to the experiment. During the training session, a mouse is placed on the grid inside the cook's apparatus. Then a buzzer is rung inside the box. 20 seconds after the ring, a mild electric shock is passed through the grid. The moment the mouse feels the pain of the electric shock, it climbs up on the wooden pole to escape the pain. This is called an unconditioned response to an aversive, unconditioned stimulus. This procedure is carried out on the mouse repeatedly. The buzzer is rung and 20 seconds later a shock is passed through the grid. Eventually the mouse develops a conditioned response to the stimulus of the sound of the buzzer. The moment the buzzer rings, the mouse climbs on to the wooden rod. In this case, the sound of the buzzer is a neutral conditioned stimulus. When the mouse climbs onto the pole in response to this neutral conditioned stimulus, this is called a conditioned avoidance response. Once the mice have been trained to exhibit conditioned avoidance response, we can start performing the experiment. We divide the mice into three groups. One group acts as control and is administered normal saline in an equivalent dose. The two test drugs. X and Y are administered to the two other groups. Out of X and Y, one drug is an antipsychotic drug and the other is a sedative. The person performing the test does not know which drug is the sedative and which is the antipsychotic. A mouse is chosen from the control group and placed into the cook's chamber. An electric shock is passed through the grid. The mouse immediately climbs onto the pole. This positive response is noted. Then the mouse is placed back onto the grid. The buzzer is rung and the mouse is observed. The moment it hears the sound, the mouse immediately climbs the wooden pole. When an electric current is passed through the grid 20 seconds later, the mouse is already on the pole, safe from the electric shock. This positive response is noted. Now a mouse is chosen from group X. This mouse has been given drug X. The mouse is placed in the cook's chamber. An electric shock is passed through the grid. The mouse climbs up the pole. This positive response is noted. Then the mouse is placed back onto the grid. A buzzer is rung. The mouse is observed. The mouse does not climb up onto the climbing pole. It remains on the electric grid. This negative response is noted. Now a mouse is chosen from group Y. This mouse has been administered drug Y. An electric shock is applied to the grid. The mouse is observed. 
the mouse does not climb the wooden pole to get away from the electric current. This negative response is noted. The mouse is placed back on the grid. A buzzer is rung. The mouse is observed for a response. The mouse does not climb up the pole. This negative response is noted. Let us now compare the responses of the mice in all the three groups. Control group. The mouse shows a response to the unconditioned stimulus, that is the electric shock, and the conditioned stimulus, that is the ringing of the buzzer. Group X. The mouse has been given drug X. This mouse shows a response to the unconditioned stimulus, electric shock, but no response to the conditioned stimulus, that is the ringing of the buzzer. Group Y. The mouse has been given drug Y. This mouse shows no response to the unconditioned stimulus, which is the electric shock, or the conditioned stimulus, which is the ringing of the buzzer. Thus, we can conclude that drug X effectively blocks the conditioned avoidance response in the mouse. The mouse essentially forgets what it has learnt. However, the response to the unconditioned stimulus is not affected. The mouse climbs the pole immediately once an electric shock is passed through the grid. This suppression of the conditioned avoidance response alone is a characteristic of the antipsychotic drugs. Thus, we can infer that drug X is an antipsychotic drug. Drug Y blocks both the conditioned and unconditioned avoidance response in the test mouse. It leads to a generalized depression of the central nervous system. Thus, we can infer that drug Y is a sedative hypnotic. The Cook's climbing pole apparatus thus aids in differentiating between antipsychotic drugs and sedative hypnotic drugs by comparing their effects on conditioned and unconditioned avoidance responses. The ability of an antipsychotic drug to suppress the conditioned avoidance response is closely related with its clinical potency. Thus, the Cook's climbing pole test is very useful to identify and evaluate the efficacy of antipsychotic drugs.